Sculpt Fun sent us their S30 Ultra 33 watt laser cutter with honeycomb and accessory pack to put together and to try out. It has a 600 by 600 millimeter working bed, which is really large for a diode laser. Um, yeah, so we're excited to see how this goes. So I'm assuming that the big flat box is probably the honeycomb. Probably. So do we need to open that now, or should we just? Should we just... Let's, I think I think we can assemble the laser with what's here. So let's start with this box. I think the other box is the accessory pack. We should we should try something for this. We should figure out how long it actually takes us to assemble. Okay, like time it. Yeah, we should time it because we've done a bunch of these. If size of honeycomb panel is large, aluminum column should be used as supports to ensure the flatness of the. All right, let's start by unpackaging and just laying stuff out based on this diagram okay. so that we have a rough idea-ish of where it goes. What a great idea, Michael. Yeah. Like we said, we're gonna be timing exactly how long it takes us to assemble this. We've done a lot of these and it's one of the first questions we'll get is about how long it took to put together and usually we just estimate, but we're gonna be more precise this time. Well, that. let's say I started at 418. We haven't really done anything, so why don't we just click start? Right now? Yeah. Okay, and then when we stop to film, click it? Yeah, all we do is lay it out. We haven't like actually started building it yet. Okay, cool. All right. So I can wait And... So something that we noticed right off the bat about assembly for this machine that was really nice is that the hardware was sorted by step. So there were bags with each bundle of hardware labeled step one, step two, step three, and so on that corresponded with the steps in the instructions. It made it a lot less, I don't know, aggravating to kind of sift through the parts as we got going. We could also be very sure that we were using the right hardware in the right places. The necessary tools for the hardware were also all included, which is really nice. All right, at this point, it's looking nice and square and the gantry rolls back and forth, which feels like the first big milestone in assembling this. From here, Michael is threading in the belts, which are then gonna get tensioned. It's perpendicular to the groove after installation. Okay, so. Laser module, laser shield. Not bad. 
Less than an hour. All right, so the uh, main laser is fully solid at this point. Uh, tomorrow we're going to attack the honeycomb and just, uh, you know, get this offer loaded up for more updates, any of that type of stuff that it needs and see where we go from there. The honeycomb was in the second box and this has got to be the largest working bed that we've ever assembled personally for a diode laser cutter. We needed to apply little feet to the bottom of it, which was really, really simple. Um, and then it just slid right beneath the laser cutter that we assembled yesterday. I'm curious to see with such a large working bed, how this machine manages to stay square and how it handles material. So I'm gonna start a cool butterfly project using some eighth inch thick red oak laser ready sheets. We make these in house and I'll put a link in the description of the video to these. They are sourced from salvaged wood in the Boston area. Um, yeah, so I'm getting masking material down on these and I'm loading them into the laser cutter. We just took this up to Lightburn because that's the program that we use with all the other laser cutters, which was really easy to do. And as you can see, the laser's moving nicely. And I wanna take a moment to show how this particular laser is focused. So it has this aluminum cylinder that you slip into place above the material being cut. And then I'm loosening up the um, hardware on the back and it slips down and then I'm tightening it up again and that will make sure that the laser head stays the proper distance above the material. It was it was a it was easy enough to do. It definitely took a little bit longer than other methods of focusing that I've ever used on a diode laser, particularly because it wasn't just one or two bolts. I think it was four of them. Um, certainly not a deal breaker, but something that I just wanted to point out. And here's the first cut. It cut really really nicely. I cranked the settings admittedly for the first one. Um, I'm doing a, I believe this is a hundred power and a 10 speed. Um, but yeah, it, it cut really beautifully. The kerf was nice and small. Now, something that's not a sculpt fun specific consideration, this is gonna be a huge consideration for any diode laser with an open bed like this, um, is the ventilation. So you can see all the smoke that's kicking up off of this as it cuts. This is tricky because you really shouldn't leave a laser unattended as it's cutting because it's literally a fire risk. So you wanna be able to react quickly if something does go wrong. But laser cuts also generate all this smoke that you really don't wanna be inhaling. So um, I, in this case, I am not standing right next to this as it's cutting. I'm actually have a big garage bay open just out of frame. And then I watched this cut from outdoors with the mask on. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a tricky combination of factors with the diode lasers where you can't leave them unattended as they cut, but you also shouldn't really breathe in the uh, smoke that comes off of them. So I would really recommend an enclosure and just put that right into your budget if you're looking to get one of these or just have a rock solid plan on how you're going to handle the smoke that it kicks off because it's not a little bit of smoke. It's a lot. After cutting this one butterfly wing on eighth inch thick oak, turn the machine off. I still ended up waiting about 30 minutes before coming back into the shop and seeing how the cut turned out. Well worth the wait though. I was really happy with how this turned out. I really can't ask for a better laser cut than that. I cut a second one and I'm going to fill these with resin and do a cool little project with this in a video to come. In the meantime, if you think this laser cutter might be the right fit for you, I'm going to put all the links in the description of the video so you can check them out. And we'll see you next time.